We're honored to host music. Glad it's recording. Uh, music, art, history, oh, no, and memory <laughs> in the aftermath of war, featuring Maestro Karim Wasfi and artist Aaron Hughes, both who have been instrumental in their Peace Through Arts work to support music and arts initiative in Iraq. Maestro Karim is a cellist and conductor of the Iraqi National Symphony Orchestra. Uh, he is the president of that Peace Through Arts Global Foundation. And as you might have seen on YouTube, famous for some of his outdoor recitals in Iraqi areas of destruction. And artist Aaron Hughes in his very crowded office there in Chicago, he's a teacher, an organizer, an artist, and most importantly, an Iraq war veteran. And um, while we're meeting for the first time on this call, um, I was really intrigued by his profile. In 2003, Aaron was a student at University of Illinois, um, called to active duty with the Army National Guard. Um, you know, Kuwait, Kuwait and Iraq were very different uh, arenas than Bloomington um, and, and um, Champaign-Urbana. So after three extensions, totaling one year, three months and seven days, he returned home here to the Midwest. But now, as you can see, has a global span on art that seeks to seek out moments of beauty, reconciliation, and uh, help us hear our collective traumas. So I'm excited to hear about that today. This work comes from their poetry, Despite Music, Despite. And while I will just share with you, when I heard that music for the first time this week, I grabbed a pen, I grabbed a notebook, and I just jot jotted down some of the thoughts and feelings that I had when I listened to it. I encourage you today, as you listen to that, maybe jot down some words that move you as well too. But for me, the words were these, they were haunting, they were searing, but they were also soaring. And I could tell how this art transcended um, words and language and boundaries and borders. And in particular, Aaron's ability to take some of the poetry from World War II poet, or World War I poet, uh, Wilfred Owen. And really almost, it reminded me uh, of a knitting project where he plucked maybe two or three sentences from a hundred year old poem, and then launched a new stanza of modern poetry talking about modern warfare. Um, Topics have changed, the people have changed, but that pain and anguish has not gone away from the conflicts across these centuries. So again, poetry heals, music heals, art heals. Um, I'm extremely honored that I will now turn the microphone over to Aaron Hughes to begin our program. But again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, good morning or afternoon, based off where you're at in the world. Um, uh, I just want to start by uh, thanking the Hennepin uh, Hist History Museum and specifically Acoma for all the help uh, hosting us today and Kathleen and the Iraqi American Reconciliation Project and Jesse and Hannah from that program. And um, it's really an honor to get to be here again with Maestro Kareem Wasfi. Um, I've been humbled to get to learn about his work uh, through Peace Through Arts in Iraq. And um, I really wanna encourage everyone to, uh, you know, as we go on through this program to learn more about that, that work there. Um, I guess uh, I, I also, um, you know, just want to start by, um, you know, acknowledging that this, we're gonna be talking about kind of complicated and at times difficult things today. Um, we're talking about war and its aftermath and memory, um, which is both, you know, something that is transformative um, and powerful and also sometimes painful. And so I just wanted to note that um, for anybody uh, in case that's something they, you know, might wanna consider as we go forward. And um, I was honored when Iraq American, Iraqi American Reconciliation Project reached out to me to be a part of this program. Um, I've followed the, their project for years now and been a, a donor really since I've first learned about it. I encourage everyone else on this call to 
to be a donor if you have the capacity to do that. Um, and that's because coming out of my military experience in Kuwait and Iraq in 2003, 2004, I felt an overwhelming obligation and responsibility um, to, uh, um, sorry, to uh, the Iraqi people. And um, I specifically, you know, through that process, um, really wanted to commit to reparations that I believe that we owe for the destruction that um, the occupation and invasion of Iraq has brought. And I think there's a lot of questions about how that's reached, but a big part of that is the ability to find restorative justice, find forms of reconciliation, and then seek both individual and community, but then also um, state uh, reparations. Um, so with that, let's uh, uh, begin our, our talk today, which does um, dive into some of these things. I want to uh, pass it off to uh, Kareem to share some introductory comments, and then uh, I'll bring it back and talk about the project Poetry Despite Music Despite Eternal War Requiem. And then um, I'm going to pass it back off to Kareem, who uh, I'm going to ask a few questions to, and then uh, we're going to conclude with some live uh, cello uh, music from Kareem before we turn it over to all of you for questions. So please, as we go through this program, please, if you have questions, please write them down. Um, you can put them in the chat or um, at the end, we'll uh, definitely be asking people uh, to share their thoughts and, and comments. And with that, Maestro. Thank you, sir. Aaron, great um, seeing you as usual. Um, Kathleen, thank you very much for your uh, um, introduction and um, congratulations for commencing your uh, post, uh, wishing you great luck and success. Uh, Akoma, thank you very much. Um, and regards and greetings to you and to the Hennepin uh, Museum. We appreciate recognizing the efforts and we appreciate what you do also um, at many different levels. I'd like also to thank everyone who's joining us um, uh, this morning or today, <laughs> beyond geography here, this morning or afternoon. So greetings to everyone. Um, um, uh, peace, peace to Arts is a, a, a mindset. Uh, the way we look at it is a mindset um, to it's a multifaceted um, holistic approach towards a better tomorrow uh, and uh, utilizing our efforts uh, uh, towards connectivity and interdependence uh, to be able to transcend the obstacles of now and what we have had uh, uh, um, uh, uh, of uh, you know obstacles and and uh, and and uh, uh, of all sorts and different uh, at different calibers. Uh, I am a war survivor. I've uh, survived the uh, Iraq-Iran conflict, the 1991 Kuwait situation, and then um, uh, it struck me when I was uh, um, in the states. Uh, one of the decisions actually in 1991 I had was to. Uh, be able to get to the United States to sense and feel what is beyond what we have witnessed in terms of instability, inconsistency, uh, the troublesome relations, uh, mainly uh, uh, government relations. Uh, it, it was so concrete at the level that uh, people can still manage uh, to um, connect and to uh, sort of create ties beyond disagreement. And this was a driving force behind my decision when I was at Bloomington, Indiana, working on my conducting and cello uh, 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 degrees. Um, um, it, it struck me uh, in the mid nineties that uh, how much people are alike, how much there were shared values and shared uh, responsibilities and obligations as well uh, towards a better tomorrow and towards a higher level of consciousness and awareness that will enable different societies, um, specifically uh, great nations uh, um, uh, to be able to <clears throat> act beyond disagreement. Um, and even though it, 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 it's a sort of disagreement that was totally inclusive and had an impact 
on every element of life in Iraq and possibly to some extent in the, uh, in the States also, and then Occident, East and the whole globe. So basically uh, it was ironic in 1998 when I was still in Bloomington, Indiana, um, um, wondering what was it behind Desert Fox? What was it behind Desert uh, uh, 1991 operation? Other than what people knew, other than what we knew. At some level, I heard more bombs and Tomahawk cruise missiles than symphonies and concertos and poetry. And we heard more sirens than music. One of my missions was to instill the innate need for stability and refinement and cultivation and beauty and to fight and battle against the grotesque impact of deaths and killings and disagreements um, to instill mutual understanding, um, uh, 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 mitigation, um, coexistence, even beyond tolerance. Tolerance sometimes is a bit tricky. So, the, the, you know, um, and then prioritizing education and science and culture and soft powers to be the connection, the connectivity tools, um, and preserving the identities and cultures of different uh, uh, cultures and mix uh, to the level of uh, harmony that uh, we have to, we, we owe to experience um, uh, and then experience normalcies in our life. So um, Peace to Art uh, was an idea uh, while I was still in Bloomington, Indiana, and then moving between the States and the Middle East Towards 2003, when I moved uh, back to Iraq uh, in different capacities, until 2007, eight, uh, when I became the uh, uh, chief conductor of the Iraqi National Symphony Orchestra, after I was uh, an international advisor in early uh, years after the 2003 uh, events. Um, so um, the, 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 there are different aspects of what I can uh, get into, but. I think at this stage, I would go back to Aaron and uh, uh, give a chance to, uh, you know, to share more views and uh, concepts and elements of uh, this ongoing effort uh, towards uh, what are the needs globally uh, to, uh, and the desires uh, uh, to live better, to live differently, um, how peace can be profitable. And although profit sometimes gets mis understood in the terminology, but how can we create through these immersive transformative efforts? Uh, how can we create a level of interdependence and connectivity uh, while we're living the fourth generation of uh, advances in our history uh, after the enlightenment, agriculture, industries, now we're living the technology. We are connecting, but are we really connected beyond technology and what is it that we can do uh, uh, to create a basic foundation for everyone to be able to connect beyond disagreement and to resolve disagreements without uh, so much death and atrocities that we have witnessed. Uh, thank you so much, um, Maestro. You know, I think that that uh, highlighting of connections is really what brought us together. Um, I'm gonna start by sharing a little bit of a slideshow. Um, and so um, in 2019, I was reached out to uh, and informed that I'd been selected um, uh, and awarded the Baltic Artist Award. And it's an international artist award and I was extremely humbled to be uh, selected, but at the same, around that same time, I had continuously and could not stop thinking about the cellist of Baghdad, Mr. Wasfi Kareem, or Maestro Wasfi, who had been going to these sites of bombings, of explosions, um, of destruction, and playing his cello and letting the vibration of the strings echo out and resist all of the destruction and transform it into beautiful sounds and literally connecting every person that was hearing those sound vibrations. Each person connected as they heard the strings vibrate. I felt like as someone that was a part of an occupying military, I, 
I wasn't at, even this, you know, despite my investment in art and my commitment and my belief, you know, that's the one thing that came out of my military deployment is my complete and utter belief in art because it's creative and it is not destructive because it can transform trauma. And um, I felt like I needed to find a way to reach out to my Shawasfi and um, find a way to offer him the award and uh, see if there's a way that we could collaborate on some kind of project in Gateshead uh, where the Baltic uh, Center for the Arts is. And um, I was lucky enough to, to know a, you know, an Iraqi curator that knew another person that knew a person that knew him. And I was able to send him an email and he said, yes, let's connect. And um, I feel like connection is really about what memory is about. And it's also the creative, linguistic, human tool we have to counter trauma. Trauma is described as the breakdown of uh, connections. It is described of a moment that could not be processed. And literally, uh, individuals go back into those experiences, trying to live them over and over again because they were not processed when they happened. And taking fragments of that trauma and finding, making new, establishing new relationships for that trauma new connections, create new meaning out of that trauma is a way to heal and transform that trauma into these beautiful and powerful ideas of solidarity. And um, I feel like that is what um, I'm honored to be talking with uh, Maestro Waspi about today. And I just need to move this thing here because uh, I can't, can't, um, I need to move this. Sorry, the, the little thing uh, in the mirror is, or the video is preventing me from seeing my own slides. I apologize. Um, so I want to start, since we're talking about memory, with this quote by Walter Benjamin uh, on excavation and memory. He who seeks to approach his own buried past must conduct himself like a man digging. Above all, he must not be afraid to return again and again to the same matter, to scatter it as one scatters the earth, to turn it over as one turns over soil. For the matter itself is no more than the strata which yield their long sought secrets only to the most meticulous investigators. And that's what Poetry Despite, Music Despite is about, it's about an investigation into memory. I remember sitting on the Euphrates in Iraq, watching the grass blow in the wind and the water roll by and think about how connected it all is. From the Euphrates to the Gulf, to the ocean, to the lakes, to home. And I remember meeting Maestro Waspi for the first time and sitting on the Tyne River in the UK in Gateshead and having our conversation about how connected it all is as we watched the river roll by. And I feel like that form of being able to bond, being able to connect across so much difference, so much different history and experience and the generosity of Maestro Waspi to open his door and being willing to uh, talk to, to me really uh, was such an honor. And um, it's been such a beautiful journey that we've been on. Because we were in the gate in the UK, this project, I started looking to the history of war in relationship to the UK and resistance and people transforming war into other things. And then, so I start with this image of the Coventry Cathedral that was bombed during World War II and uh, completely destroyed. And when it was rebuilt, the inaugural performance 
was a performance by Benjamin Britten, a famous British composer and pacifist who actually refused to fight in World War II, um, which was very controversial and complicated. And there's many layers to that uh, situation. But he was invited to give the uh, welcome everyone back into this cathedral. And he did so by creating the War Requiem, which was based off of nine poems by Wilfred Owen, a World War I poet who dies the last week of the war. Literally a trench poet writing poetry in the trenches and writing poetry that's critical of World War I. And he passes away the last week of the war. This project that Maestro Wasfi and I were working on was literally a hundred years later, basically to the to the to the day. <clears throat> Wilford Owen's poems were published in a book that was edited by Siegfried Sassoon. And this book particularly is the book that Benjamin Britten was inspired by, this poems by Wilfred Owen book, um, in which he used to conduct and orchestrate his uh, composition of the War Requiem. I bring this up because Siegfried Sassoon is such an essential figure. One, in talking to Michael Rakowitz about this project, I learned that the Sassoon family is an Iraqi family. There's an Iraqi lineage, a British Iraqi lineage to the Sassoon family. This British officer was disgusted with his experiences in the war. And he wrote a letter to the House of Commons protesting the war, saying that it was wrong and needed to end. Because of that, he was determined to be insane and sent to an insane asylum where he met Wilfred Owen. And they vast became friends talking about poetry. And so after um, Wilfred Owen dies, and I will say, Sigrid Sassoon was not a pacifist. After he heals from his letter of dissent, he returns to the war. He returned because he wanted to show that it wasn't a matter of being a pacifist, but that it was a matter of critiquing what the whole war was about. It wasn't a belief system, but about critiquing what the system was about. And I just raise this because on the way to meet Owen, this is an awarded decorated officer, British officer with Iraqi lineage, takes his notorious battle cross. This is a this is a story. Now it's not confirmed, but it's been written about many times. And whether it's true or not, I don't know. But there's a narrative, a story of him taking his battle cross and throwing it into the water. A generation, two generations later, um, Vietnam veterans begin to come home from Vietnam and organize themselves into a resistance movement in which they publish poetry about their critique of, of, of being on the ground in Vietnam and of the war in Vietnam. And they, I like to think, since one of the founding members of Vietnam Veterans and Sword, Jan Berry, was a poet, that one of their most powerful actions was called Dewey Canyon in 1971. They went to Congress and they occupied the Capitol and they returned their service medals. In 2012, marching alongside Afghans for Peace in Chicago at the NATO summit with over 50 other veterans walking alongside Reverend Jesse Jackson, I returned my service medal. My service medals for the global war on terror. I bring up this lineage because that history is a history of individuals that aren't pacifists, but come from a, a history that have ground experience that say, no, what, what is happening here is wrong. 
it's a dehumanizing experience, both for those individuals that we see as enemies, the civilians that are caught in between, and for the service members themselves. And what does it mean to then transform that and change that? And it seems like with all that internal history, and it seemed like in some ways the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war, really they are all just echoes of what was happening within World War I, all the borders that had been established, that in some ways, Wilfred Owen's dream of putting war to rest was in question. And <clears throat> this project was about raising that question while also building those connections across uh, such difference. <laughs> I share that uh, that's the cello prelude by Maestro Maestro Wasfi, and um, uh, take you back into so these are the Coventry Cathedral, and just as Maestro Wasfi was pushing back against all the destruction through his cello playing in Iraq, I felt my role was to lift up the destruction, uh, this historic and endless destruction through prints, which is one of my primary mediums and his role we had talked about was to resist that through this beautiful and powerful cello music and that in essence is the music despite um, 
Um, each print was based off of the way the original Requiem was structured was around a Latin mass. So each uh, piece is based off one of the nine poems and these different reference images that inspired uh, the thinking around the design and development of the woodcut uh, prints. This here is the Fallujah Bridge and each print was then each of uh, the poems was asked to be responded to by a um, by a poet. And here is Carlos Serra, another Iraq veteran uh, responding. Squeeze my heart, break his gaze, caress her arms. Not with hypoxic hands, you are a moat of dust. 40 kills, 100 oscillations of the spirit. The crown a passport, each stamp a cinder block. A hypoxic mode of dust you call my hand. War talks of fortitude. Says squeeze each cinder block to crack her crown. Transmute the factory in service of killing. In the parable, the one that we all know, Abraham squeezes fortitude into talk. Isaac, you are a mote of dust in a barrel of rye, he says. Father says, kill, he says, destroy the mountain. But where the for this Sada, O Mosul. This day, like our wars is long, behold everywhere the dead and living vacillate. Only Squeeze my heart, break his gaze, caress her arms. So in that clip, you heard um, uh, excerpts from the original Requiem. And a big part of this piece was deconstructing and that original Requiem and working with sound designer Nate Sandberg to take the live performances that Maestro Wasfi uh, the Syrian Kings, a group of young Syrian refugee hip hop artists, along with uh, Dunya McHale, who I'm about to play a clip from now, and uh, amazing Iraqi poet, and uh, Carlos Seurat and Kevin Basil, two other Iraq veterans, uh, into this composition uh, based off of Maestro Wafi, Wasfi's music. Um, and I'm just going to play this last clip of uh, Dunya McHale's poem and uh, I just wanted to share this piece because it's a direct reference to Kathy Kalowitz's work. Uh, she's an amazing German artist who uh, uh, lost her son uh, during World War I and made a series of woodcut cut prints called War, which is why I was using woodcut um, to make uh, these prints. And with that, Dunya. Aaron, can you forgive me? It's Kathleen speaking. I can only see your first quote. Can you forward to my childhood in Baghdad? You can only see my first quote. Yeah. Really? Yeah. This whole time? Yeah. It's okay. The music was still so beautiful. That was okay, fine. Well, <laughs> let me. But we need the images. Yeah. Uh, let me stop. Take your time. Sharing. For some reason, my screen won't do anything. I've lost control. Of my <laughs> uh, 
escape. Okay. Do you if think I... we can share your screen again, Aaron? I stopped your screen share currently. Yeah, let's, that's a great idea. I'm very sorry, everyone. I thought you were getting to see all these images. Well, now I'm gonna um, hopefully, can you, so you see this quote? Do you see an image of a river? No. no, it stays on the Walter Benjamin quote. Yeah, right here we there. go. Yeah. Can you see the river now? Yes, now we can. Now we can. And can you see the next image now? No. The next one? No. Okay, you can only see it in this little view then, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's I'm... Wilfred Owen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing. I uh, apologize. This is along the Euphrates River. This is an image of the Coventry Cathedral. This is Wilfred Owen. This is trench poetry. This is the book I was referring to. This is Sigur Sassoon. This is the works of resistance by Vietnam veterans. This is Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. And this is the um, getting along into the uh, piece. And we were right um here i'm so sorry that you didn't see any of these prints <laughs> i'm very embarrassed and um don't be uh i will uh, you can throw through the, your prints just a little bit slower because they're so striking yes i'm sorry um okay so um each print is based off of one of the uh poems this is Requiem Aeternum. As I mentioned, it's based on a Latin mass, the original rec uh, Requiem. This is Dias Aries, Permanent Star, uh, this, this piece here. Um, this here is called Forever War, and each piece has an associated poem. This piece here is Sonnet on Knowing Our Drones Hit Targets Wrongfully Identified. This here is futility. This here is part of the offertorium, and it is called uh, Mute. And that was the poem that we heard from Carlos Serra. And this here is um, um, a part of the Sanctus and is a part of, was responded to by um, Dunya McHale. Um, and she wrote two pieces. One is this plastic death piece that was just about the play. And it was a direct reference to Kathy Collowitz's work. Again, I apologize that people were not seeing these images earlier. Please forgive me. Um, and I'd like to share uh, Dunya McHale's poem because I think it's extremely powerful. Motum plastiki, plastic death. في طفولتي في بغداد كنا نلعب موتا يقتل أحدنا الآخر بأسلحة بلاستيكية نتمدد على الأرض جامدين كالجثث دقيقة دقيقتين still as corpses for a minute or two. ثم يضحك أحدنا فاضحا موتنا البلاستيكي. Then one of us laughed, exposing our plastic death. فيمسك أحدنا الآخر كأننا نمسك الحياة وننهض نمضي إلى لعبة أخرى. We held each other as the dying might life itself, but rose to play another game. تنقلب السنوات مثل أرقام اليانصيب. وتمضي بغداد بطفولاتنا إلى المنافس نرى من بعيد أطفالا يشبهوننا يقتل أحدهم الآخر يتمددون بلا حراك lie motionless on the floor. ولكن لا أحد منهم يضحك لا أحد منهم يمسك الحياة وينهض. But none of them laugh or hold life and rise. Mm. 
This uh, is the piece called a part of the Angus D. And this is the uh, full installation at the Baltic uh, where we did the performances. And the final uh, block is Liber Me. Uh, and um, this is some examples of the block production uh, with Maloney printing in Portland, Oregon. And um, it was an addition of five prints and you know I just want to return to this amazing team that I got to work with for this project uh Dunya Mikhail, Maishra Wasfi, Muhammad and Ali and myself and behind us Kevin Basil, Carlos Sara and the curator Kathleen. So uh, um, and with that uh, let me return it to Maestro Wasfi. Um, I'm very sorry about the, um, again, you're about fine, Aaron. <laughs> well, thank you for going back uh, to and referring to, um, uh, it's extremely, uh, important, uh, to realize how our brains function and when things are, you know, pretending memory and what do we engage with and, and and what do we choose to connect to? And I was just wondering, you know, while we're going this uh, through, through, while we were going through the fact that there should have been images projected, I was wondering what's going on uh, in everybody's uh, mind. Uh, and then comparing that to what they have uh, uh, been exposed to uh, looking at the, uh, the images and then uh, part of the music and then the poetry. And that's, uh, th this is one of the elements of connecting, um, you know, connecting beyond uh, space time. Uh, use a bit of my passion for quantum entanglement and some of my physics background in Baghdad and, and Cairo, uh, my, my other passion other than conducting. The fact that how can we, what is it that we're doing and how the, how how do we function at the level of connecting uh turning time into time blocks of nows and then turning that into this linear uh path that we call time and then circumstance and then wars and as i was just sharing and as we have shared in our discussions deep discussions and um i'm a war survivor myself and uh you know, between 1980 until 91, uh, I heard probably more sirens and bombs and rockets and uh, explosions than uh, what I have wanted uh, compared to symphonies and concertos and poetry. And then I managed to transcend beyond that by creating an equilibrium with the situation through playing more music and, and studying more conducting and studying more physics and more philosophy and, and so forth and so on. And, you know, while I was still in, uh, in, in Iraq growing up. The idea, what I'm referring to, is um, the fact of self-conceptualization and self-empowerment and self-confidence and building this uh, through education and through science, but primarily through arts and music, in particular arts in general, to create a sense of uh, what do we connect to in terms of beauty and that how, how that is related to, uh, to the atrocities that we know about. I said repeatedly, uh, maybe terrorists or radicals, maybe they didn't even have a chance to be exposed to beauty properly, to recognize their uh, path in comparison to resolving disagreement through uh, tension and through killings and through wars and, and so forth and so on. What I mean by that is we need more culture, we need more art as a sort of, not limited to expression or connectivity, but also towards self-conceptualization and self-realization not to fall into the entrapment of materialism and the entrapment of monopolizing how people think and then politicizing 
ideologies and politicizing uh, factors of why people function and why they do they choose to do what, what they do. Um, so the approach of, uh, 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 and this is one of the reasons I chose to connect to the paintings and to the poetry through a solo performance as opposed to conducting the whole Requiem again, uh, which would have been great to do in Iraq, uh, would have been a beautiful premiere. But I chose to empower the self by performing the solo cello as I have done in areas of destruction around Iraq uh, in defiance against uh, destruction, de uh, demoralizing the spirits of the individual. And I was asked uh, in several, you know, several times, why did I, why I was already the conductor of the symphony and defying instability and premiering works and connecting cultures and focusing on classical, uh, Iraqi, Oriental, different genres to connect different cultures uh, in my capacity of doing that. Uh, but the solo performance was in respect for the fallen ones globally, not limited to Iraq only, in respect for, for those who have lost their lives for unknown reasons. Terror was hitting people, terrorists, if I may refer to this as, as an act of terror, these explosions, um, as we have seen in Iraq and many other places around the world, in many cases, I think people didn't even know who they were killing. So it's a, it's this real uh, scene of, uh, uh, with, that we witness through, uh, you know, space time and, and hence my, uh, um, and to this, my, 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 my approach that defers to that is by trying to share beauty as much as possible, as much as doable, uh, whatever is possible, and turning every element of life into an area uh, where we can experience that uh, at the personal level and then at the populace, at the level of the populace, uh, and we create this coalescence uh, and connectivity uh, that, um, that, that does work. Uh, so this is a portion of why Peace to Arts Iraq and how it had started also. And as I mentioned, um, all of a sudden I'm there in Bloomington years after 91, where I have experienced um, the latest armament capabilities and watching rockets left and right falling on our heads in Baghdad. Then I'm in Bloomington, Indiana, 1998, and Baghdad is attacked again. And I'm wondering what, you know, there, there wasn't really any other way to resolve the issue uh, or the issues that were so uh, um, uh, complex to the level of just that, doing the, there wasn't any other way. And I think that that is the empowerment, the empowering uh, uh, fa factor of how arts education and connectivity and interdependence between people can work and will always, shall always work. Thank you, uh, thank you, um, Maestro Waspi. Um, I thought, you know, we're coming up on the hour and we hit, I think a great way, as we mentioned, would be to conclude um, with some beautiful cello music. Um, would you do us the honor of closing out our program with some music? It's already an hour, see, unbelievable. Or do you, or, well, it is already an hour. I don't, um is that is that uh that's is, fine and do we have time for questions yeah we, we do have time for questions absolutely um, okay and uh uh yeah or how how uh how are we doing so we, how long do i have to uh, uh as please as as you feel moved <laughs> Um, cause we, we have a full half hour for, uh, questions. Um, I did want to make one, uh, yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. 
Very profound. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As I listened to that music, um, and I will say, Aaron, you felt self-conscious that the blocks weren't up, but it did allow my mind to go back into um, a memory of, of something that, that I saw during the war that I had totally forgotten about until that music kind of brought it back. Um, but I do want to open it up to others. I'm going to ask one question first, though, of, of Aaron, because you talked, Maestro talked about, you know, maybe these terrorists were never exposed to beauty or culture. And um, I'll say as an American, I did not discover the World War I poets until 
about two years ago. And I considered myself a history person, political science person. Um, and when I, when I discovered the poetry of Wilfred Owen, I almost fell over. It was so powerful. Um, and so Aaron, what was your poetic training before, before you embraced it um, after your military service? I, 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 um, I didn't have any poetry training. Um, I didn't, I didn't know anything. I mean, I was a junior at a university, but, uh, I tried to read as few books as possible. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, I was pretty, uh, yeah, I feel pretty uneducated. And, um, to be honest, my deployment, I was the first that I, not only did I realize I believed in art as a way to counter destruction. Um, but I read, it was the first time in my life I read books and I couldn't believe reading Catch-22, I couldn't believe, I felt like my, I kept getting in the same boat where no matter what we did, it was a Catch-22 and we had another mission to do whether we were told we were supposed to go home or not. And yeah. uh, uh, so uh, I didn't have any training. I uh, came home and I had always written as a form of taking notes and I was able to connect with Warrior Riders, an amazing organization and uh, spend time writing with them. And uh, that really kind of encouraged me to dig deeper into the work of writing. Um, I did want to make one correction. Um, I said um, it was, uh, Ahmed and Ali, it was Ahmed and Hussein, um, who were part of the Syrian kings, but Ali and was one of the uh, um, other members of that team that were um, involved with uh, making the music it, along with Joan and Izzy Finch and um, Powal uh, Jaredowski, I believe is how you, Jaredowski, I believe is how you say their name. They had a whole team. So it was Hussein and Ahmed that were the ones uh, that were actually in the audio pieces and a part of the performance. And Catherine uh, was the curator. Thank you for that clarification. I'm going to open it up for other questions. And as people formulate those, I do want to note that Bo in the chat had said, you know, achingly beautiful music and images, culture cannot be erased. But would we mention that this is the second anniversary of the October 2019 revolution in Iraq? So I wanted to, to mention that. Um, but may I ask people if you have a question, go ahead and unmute, maybe raise your hand. It's, it's funny that you say that because I, I had started other talks with this picture of my show Asfi um, and basically had a, I think it was a barricade uh, <laughs> holding a cup of tea. <laughs> at the career, I was from, at the from 2019 and um, you know I really appreciate the person that brought that forward. Thank you for raising that. It, it is extremely moment. I, my show Asfi, would you speak to that for a little bit? Would you mind? Um, <clears throat> well, technically, in reference to the protests, uh, the, the protesting in, in Iraq. Uh, yes. I, I think <clears throat> I think it, it is definitely a historic um, moment regionally, but in, specifically in Iraq, um, uh, the fact that the youth, the future leaders had taken uh, into their hands the option of expressing um, and acting proactively and um, in support of change and in support of, uh, empowered by a vision. I think it's a great uh, level of functionality that was lacking for many reasons, internal and external reasons to include conflicts and wars and so forth and so on. Iraq was never stable in my opinion. And I'm referring to that Mesopotamia for the last 5,000 years. Kathleen, you probably would agree uh, knowing from history. Uh, that, that region uh, we know it's a cradle of civilization, but it had seen so much instability and inconsistency 
So we have it's there in the situation that there's no stability as uh, we know it somewhere else in the world. Now saying this, the fact that people can reach a level uh, uh, and face corruption and face and to be able to do that, I think it's it's a uh, uh, definitely uh, the real new Iraq that uh, people would want to expect uh, beyond uh, corruption and politicizing the lives of everything, uh, including culture, maybe, or including um, uh, the day-to-day -day affiliations of, of people. I think it's a healthy outcome. Um, I think it's uh, a necessity. Uh, I, I think it's uh, time for that to turn proactively into real change as opposed to just the freedom to express and whichever article in the constitution allows you to to protest against uh, you know um, uh, it's time for for things to change based upon we've seen too many pro protests by the way to include protests against the war against different wars in the globe uh, but being on the positive side i would uh, probably uh, focus on an area of positivity against the toxicity of war and the erroneous acts of politics that I still believe uh, we're heading the right direction globally because I see more conflicts happening between governments and global powers, economical monopolies and so forth and so on. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I believe in facts and information. and. The, the fact that people, the fact that we have people now from at least five continents this morning, between the states and Europe and the Middle East and so on, shows a, 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 a tangible uh, level of uh, uh, of compassion, a tangible level of sharing, a tangible level of maybe even disagreement, but it is dealt with at a, a high level of consciousness and awareness and respect for others. So uh, uh, might have been a bit of a long uh, statement for, for referring to the protests. I was there in Tahrir. I was there in 2011. Uh, I wasn't a troublemaker. I was there also <laughs> with the uh, um, musicians, my students, followers, uh, some science students. And in some cases, we had an effort of the beautification of Tahrir. So we painted the shops, we painted the tunnels. We had uh, exhibitions for three days. We had two concerts in support of expression and freedom of expression. Maybe not similar to what we have had in 2015 and 2000 uh, um, uh, earlier, but again, I think this is a healthy uh, outcome of what history that we're witnessing. And I'm hoping for this to be a transformative um, uh, factor in the lives of Iraqis uh, to see tangible uh, results for protesting, as opposed to just, opposed to just, uh, you know, the freedom to express, which is not the situation needs more than that. Yes. <clears throat> um, Salam, who is on this call, wrote in the chat uh, how much they enjoy promoting um, the great works of of Iraqi artists here in Minnesota, but in particular. The pianist and composer Beatrice Ohanesian. Oh my goodness, yes. Tell us more of, I don't know that name. Tell us more, um, Maestro, about her and then others that you would recommend um, who maybe wrote. And you know, where could we find that music? We, we'd love to learn more about that, please. The late Beatrice Ohanesian was uh, the prominent, uh, famous Iraqi Armenian uh, pianist. She was uh, a soloist. Uh, I grew up uh, 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 after Europe, went back in Baghdad, uh, attending some of her recitals. And then when I was the youngest uh, musician to join the Iraqi National Symphony Orchestra in the early 80s, uh, after a special permission, because I was actually getting paid <laughs> a salary. And I had a special permission, uh, a waiver of, uh, because the law was underage. So these were some good me memoirs. Uh, 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 Miss uh, uh, Late Ohansian had uh, uh, performed uh, uh, several times with the symphony as a soloist. And um, I think she was the first um, Iraqi female uh, who was so committed and dedicated towards her arts and music and performance 
and she was actually uh, offered, she was awarded a Steinway um, by uh, the government back then. And this led to bringing several Steinways um, uh, into Iraq. Uh, two were at our music and ballet school and uh, I think others were around um, the city. And um, unfortunately, this was interrupted eventually by um, the sanctions and the blockade in 1991. Uh, that was supposed to be a step towards bringing um, factories to make uh, strings and instruments in support of people like uh, Leto Hansian. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, I, I can't thank enough uh, people who had contributed to this. We had instruments donated uh, for similar stories like Ms. Ohansian's, um, two young Iraqis from the States. Um, I can't remember who, what, I it just, I'm extending my thanks to everyone uh, who had contributed and every institution and offer efforts like those which show how people manage at the end to create this foundation of a better tomorrow uh, beyond agreeing or disagreeing. We can disagree, that's healthy. But at the end, there are certain limits and thresholds that we should not, uh, you know, uh, cross in terms of mutual respect. So, uh, other musicians in the states, I'm really not aware of. I think I was the only one uh, continuing. Uh, I know um, some of the uh, records are uh, uh, possibly around uh, different uh, libraries, but I don't think there's enough uh, actually. And this is a great initiative that we can even commit, we can start considering an exchange mm -hmm. to the level of what people can collect into exchange um, and then support such programs that, like the reconciliation uh, project or the museum itself, you know, in support of that. I, by the way, uh, uh, beyond Ms. Ohansian's impact, I don't see this as a reactive approach. A reconciliation is, is, is actually an ongoing proactive approach towards normalizing relations and decreasing tension maybe and awareness and mutual understanding um, bit amongst uh, uh, great nations like the US and Iraq and others as well alike and can yeah. be a global approach. So um, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, like Mr. Hans Sian's uh, work was brought to attention and I'm hoping that we could do more exchange of information and tangible uh, uh, work as uh, in arts and music in particular uh, for mutual understanding through the cultural preservation of both nations. I love it. And, and um, this event was promoted uh, informally to the Minnesota Orchestra team as well. So um, incredibly, our founder, Kathy McKay, wrote that Miss Beatrice uh, uh, lived here in Minnesota with her sister and the brother. Kathy, did you meet her back in the day? Well, we can't hear you, Kathy McKay. Yeah. Yes, she and her sister came to some of our early art events. And um, then Salam, who has been speaking here, is a professional pianist as well as other, he does other things. But he played uh, one of her pieces called Hammurabi. Uh, for a large group of people here. Uh, Beatrice ha has passed on a few years back and her sister continued to stay connected with us uh, for a while. Her brother so, has also passed on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I look forward she to was proud of the, Minnesota then. <laughs> yes, she was proud of the Steinway and she didn't um, hesitate to say that it was a personal gift from Saddam Hussein. Yeah. That was how she interpreted it. Yeah. yeah. And also she and her sister, any chance they would get, they would um, be great, publicly be grateful to the Iraqis for bringing their family, making, giving their family safety because they had fled uh, during the persecutions in, you know, their home country and were made welcome in Baghdad. And they always wanted people to know that, how, how welcoming the Iraqis were to them and to man, so many of their other country people. What other questions do people have for either Aaron or Kareem?
or comments? How did the music make you feel? Well, uh, hi, uh, can Jamal. I talk? Oh, oh. Yes, Jamal okay. first, then Dr. Azar, yeah. I will go to. Yeah, and I think the maestro, Mustafa uh, Kareem, was for Kareem, uh, it bring uh, tears to my eyes. And because I was there, you know, I've seen all these places and it was like, this was a great idea and it's very brave to go there and, and play the music. And I was like, I wish I could, you know, if he wrote something about his journey to Iraq from A to Z until he can, you know, take him back to state. And, and there's a question is the Iraqi press or Arabic press or any national press was there to record or to, to document this visit for you, Mr. Wasfi Maestro? Um, actually, um, I live in Iraq, <laughs> amongst other places. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I live between, uh, well, I move between uh, Iraq and other places in support of um, A Better Tomorrow and support of um, our mission. And um, I do conduct the symphony orchestra when I'm there. Um, so it's too many chapters, uh, Jamal, if I would go through, there's an A, but the Z is kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's uh, too many chapters involved. So basically, yeah. Um, I, the, 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 uh, what, what, what we can, what I can really focus on is basically this transformative, uh, power of music and arts and culture, uh, and to prioritize that, um, towards, again, towards knowledge, towards, um, uh, stating facts uh, of, of uh, uh, showing uh, uh, d different levels of, of, of uh, connectivity that people need around the globe, despite technology, uh, despite our, you know, the pandemic and the recent developments that prevents people from traveling freely or the political reasons that would prevent people from traveling. Uh, I don't see technology as a substitution for the fact that people need to connect, per, you know, in person, they need to physically be somewhere. They need to physically um, engage and talk and and express and disagree and eat and uh, marry and and migrate and and so uh, th there is a wonderful world that exists and we have a responsibility of showing how normal things can be on the positive side and uh, beyond, uh, you know, beyond. Uh, uh, the 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 um, the, the uh, uncertainty to see beauty even in uncertainty and transform that into an energy field that would enable people to um, you know uh, I'm hoping for Iraq to be a safe country that will have every American who is interested to visit and every Iraqi who disagrees with Iraq to be able to visit um, unlike days when we have seen that people could not disagree and be there. Um, so basically, uh, it's a it's a wonderful journey. Uh, Iraq is, uh, I think, it's deeply wounded and hurt and needs uh, what we're trying to offer. And this is not even a government affiliation. It's a belief of us individuals who believe in. Um, you know, uh, this is not a PR campaign for any government or a political uh, scene. It's more of an engagement that even supports governments to make the right decisions for better relations yeah. mutually. Yeah. Um, so thank you for uh, connecting to the music and thank you for connecting to your country. And yeah. I'm great you're living in, a, in a, another great nation. Um, yeah. um, and the founding fathers a few centuries ago had a good foundation for a country that is uh, that we would wish to see always successful and progressive and stable. And so much I would uh, think for, um, you know, our Iraq to be prosperous and developing, not only based uh, upon the last 5,000 years, 
but the next 5,000 years yet to come. This is how I look at it. Thank you, thank you, Maestro. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and as we move into the last five minutes of our program, um, I did see that Dr. Azar had his hand raised, but he is connecting in. If he's not on, let's uh, answer Jesse's question, um, and that's to Aaron. Tell us the the the, the wood blocks were created. Um, is that right? By um, or inspired by a mother whose son had been in in World War One. Tell us more about that, please, Kathy. I didn't get the name. Yeah, Kathy Kalowitz is a famous German. Uh, uh, artist, uh, um, expressionist artist, um, and um, uh, her um, her son um, was killed in uh, World War One, and uh, right after that, she created a war uh, series that's rather well known um, within the um, kind of woodblock and uh, wood. Um, the tradition of these series that are on war, including Otto Dix's series, The Craig, and uh, along with um, going back to uh, um, uh, the disasters of war um, by Goya. So there's this long history that she was pulling from and uh, trying to build off that. And it wasn't the first time I've uh, worked in Woodblock in any way, but um, it was definitely the first time I was working at that scale. Uh, the prints are uh roughly four foot by eight feet so they're they're large uh prints and um you know again it was just a kind of diving into all these histories and talking about trying to acknowledge these recurring themes and yet how there's continuous resistance to those that violence in the form of art and poetry and music <clears throat> and um maestro Waspi's music is you know, an amazing thing. And it's such a humbling thing. He sent me so many different links and articles about the work he's been doing in Iraq, uh, teaching so many different uh, communities about music, using music to heal from trauma. Uh, when we were working on this project, he was, um, you know, and I know we're focused on memory, but there's like so many ways this layers into the current moment. And, you know, he was um, traveling in spaces that had just been re- um, kind of restabilized from ISIS and working with youth that had lived in this ISIS occupation and trying to use music as a form to heal from that. And then not only the, all the other forms of violence um, that individuals experienced. And I just, again, I, I can't think of a, of a more, you know, a more powerful practice and one that I just am so humbled to be able to um, um, be in dialogue with. And really, I, I want to encourage everyone to try and support uh, Maestro Wasi's work. Thank, Thank you. you for that, Aaron. I, I adore watching, um, observing this friendship between you two gentlemen. It's, it's, it's so uh, tangible and sincere. Um, I will save our last question for Dr. Azar. He's back online now. That will be our final question, but I will say all of the piece through our website. Aaron, do you have that website? Um, if we can There's get a that into page. the link. I can uh, post a Facebook page. Perfect. And then um, again, Dr. Azar's question, and then perhaps as we close out, maybe just some final, um, maybe one more minute of the beautiful cello music would be a wonderful way to end. So uh, Dr. Azar. Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, hi, everybody. Actually, it is not a, a real question. I would like to, uh, to thank everybody and all our guests who attended uh, this uh, meeting today. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. Yeah, yeah, my connection is unstable. Sorry for that. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I would like to extend our thanks uh, on behalf of the IRIB to Hennepin History Museum, Mr. Aaron and Maestro Wasfi. We are so glad. Uh, you are among us uh, in today's meeting. 
and actually being an uh, Iraqi citizen and uh, uh, living here in Minnesota for many years, I've been so impressed, uh, my Stavasfi, by your great work and achievements. Actually, um, you have a wonderful creativity and ability to transform uh, pain and sufferings, you know, and all these sad memories uh, left left over from wars into uh, a healing environment full of joy and, and inspiration. So this is very, very inspiring to everybody. Actually, music is very important, not, not only emotionally, but medically speaking, it is a very powerful tool of healing for the soul and for the body. And uh, being a doctor, speaking from my medical background, <laughs> music has been used in many medical centers as a mode of, of uh, therapy. So uh, we hope that uh, we hear more and more of your uh, uh, per per performances, especially here in Minnesota. We hope to see you perform in person here, Master Osfi, in the Twin Cities. Um, and actually, we are in need, not only in Iraq, but everybody is in great need to replace all these spaces full of sad memories with um, better feelings, with a music, with hope, with joy for the future. This will have a great impact on, on the motivation of everybody in the on the creativity of every person's, uh, you know, uh, performance. Uh, I would like to thank everybody again uh, for this opportunity and hoping to see you soon in the Twin Cities, Mr. Uh, Wasfi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maluki. Um, if I may, uh, uh, Kathleen, uh, if I may mention something succinctly and briefly, um, and indeed, I would like to appreciate uh, mentioning the relevance of um, music as Again, to reiterate and to share with everyone, I believe art is for art, but really uh, the message here is beyond that because I'm utilizing uh, music in particular at the educational level and the scientific level to be not only a tool of de-radicalization, prevention of terror and tension, prevention of um, obstacles, but also um, a healing factor. And one of my hopes was to be able to create these uh, music therapy and PTSD centers around Nainawa and around Iraq. It's a long process, but hopefully we're turning some of the, uh, 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 my hope and my uh, next battle is to turn some of the community centers into um, uh, centers of connectivity and a space like the cloud of a space of positivity and healing as well as integration uh, mutual understanding and coexistence and cultural preservation and cultural awareness and so forth and so on. The list is huge. So this is definitely a priority of mine and to spread uh, culture regionally and um, also to utilize that as a tool of um, uh, healing and in both at the uh, educational level scientific level as well as the community and societal engagement level to have more positive energy shared and manifested at the level of the core for everyone within our molecules and at the level of this holistic approach globally. So maybe quantum entanglement does work on planet Earth, not only out in space. And if we do something positive in Basra, it would probably have you know, positive repercussions in Chicago somewhere or somewhere in DC that would be good for Fallujah and the list goes on and on and on. So I'll <laughs> uh, thank you again. And uh, as was requested, I will share another impromptu uh, with um, everyone uh, uh, and hoping uh, to uh, spread more uh, love and peace uh, everywhere. Inshallah. Inshallah. So this is, again, I'm classically trained between Yale and Bloomington and Baghdad and Cairo and all that, but I'm not going to play Bach again. <laughs> it's going to be dedicated to all of you. Uh, another uh, premiere of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, dedicated to everyone's uh, positive energy that they have shared with us, um, starting with Aaron, uh, Kathleen, 
uh, Jesse and, um, uh, and everybody at the museum and everyone who is following uh, uh, us uh, currently and uh, keeping us in the thoughts in the near future. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Kareem, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, this was a great morning. I hope everyone had a really good time. Um, please uh, ask Kareem and Aaron more questions. I gave you their contact information. Um, and if you're in the Twin Cities, please come to the museum to enjoy um, our exhibit, Home of Memories. And Careful, I might be bringing my cello then. <laughs> We would love to have you here. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you, everyone. Let us know when. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much, um, Iraqi American Reconciliation Project. It's been an honor. Maestro Wasfi, it's so good to see you. Good seeing you. Good seeing you, sir. Regards to everyone and uh, love to everyone. And again, um, uh, tomorrow is always better. <laughs> Thank you. Inshallah. Thank you, Karim. Thank you. I'm Bye. glad to have you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Ever, thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you.